What's up everyone? Welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Dennis and let's take a quick look at our project for today. So I'm going to show you guys how to recreate this alien jellyfish animation that I made from scratch. And uh, we'll cover everything from the modeling to rigging, animation, lighting, materials, compositing. Pretty much everything you need to know from start to finish. But before I begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to Danielle, Danielle Lesson on YouTube. The main animation technique that I'm using for this, I actually learned from one of his tutorials. In fact, he has many excellent C4D and motion graphics tutorials. So I will encourage you to check out his videos if you have a chance. With that said, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing I want to do is to model the jellyfish body or the head. So I'm going to go to my friend view and I'm going to select the pen tool and I'm going to change my type to linear and just draw a quick profile of the jellyfish body. Something like this. And I want to make sure that these two vertices right here are aligned at the center. So we can just punch that in down here. And I'm just going to move these points around a little bit to um, make it look a little nicer. Something like this. Something like this. Maybe a little thinner here. Okay, so I think that looks not bad. Let's drop our spline into a lathe object and uh, right away we have some geometry to work from. And we can go back to the spline still. And I'm just going to scale this in the Y a little bit so that it's a little taller. Cool. Next, I'm going to create a connect object and I'm going to reference the lathe object we just made. And I'm going to add a correction deformer to my connect object. And this allows us to treat the connect object like a editable mesh, meaning that we have access to its vertices, edges, and polygons. But right away, I noticed that the normals for my polygons are flipped. so we can go back to our lathe object and click the flip normals option and now our normals should be in the right direction as you can see so i'm going to go into my edge mode and hit ul on my keyboard to bring up my loop selection and select every other loop here like this and then i'm going to um hit spacebar which is the hotkey for my life selection tool and uh, holding down control I'm just gonna deselect all of these edges on the outside like this so I'm just gonna go around and deselect my edges and um, now we can just bring our edges down like this and maybe scale it out a little bit. And uh, real quick, I'm gonna turn off my um, display grid just so I can see things a little easier. Now I'm gonna drop this whole thing into a subdivision surface and uh, there it is, we have our jellyfish body. One thing though, I'm gonna go back and uh, go into my vertice mode. I'm gonna hit this vertice and just bring it down, oops. Just bring that down a little bit so it's not so pointy. And um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. At this point, I'm going to right click and hit current state to object. And I can hide these two. So now I just have a clean mesh to work with. And I can rename this my jellyfish. So then the next thing I want to do is to create the motion with the movement of my jellyfish and to do that I'm gonna add I'm gonna use a Bausch deformer 
and by default if you play with the strength here it does something like this which is kind of what we want but not exactly so the trick is in the fall off so let me turn on linear linear fall off and make sure that I'm in the right direction in the Y and that it is covering the whole thing let's turn this all the way up and we also have the option of creating a custom curve for the fall off so I'm going to draw something like this and um, oops and there's also the option of spline animation speed so let's turn this up to something like 50. if we play this back nothing happens because for whatever reason in order for you to see that you have to add a jiggle deformer after the bulge so now if we play this back we can see our animation but it looks like our fall off is in the reverse direction so let's turn that to a negative y and now it looks um, it's getting close to what we want but let's go into our jiggle deformer and uh, see if we can smooth out the animation a little bit to do that let's turn our structural settings all the way down to zero and our stiffness to something low like five or six and now the animation looks a lot more smoother and let me go back to my fall off and maybe clamp this or make it a little tighter and maybe I can turn the whole thing a little bigger and move it down something like this okay I think that looks pretty good um, we can keep tweaking it but I'm just gonna call it good and keep moving so the next the next thing I want to do is to create these tentacles for my jellyfish to do that I'm gonna use the hair object so let me go into my polygon mode hit UL again on the keyboard to bring out my loop selection and select a loop down here I'm gonna hit V select set selection so this is where I want my um, hair object to emit from so with this selected let's go to simulate hair object add hair and uh, without doing anything let's just play this back and that looks pretty cool but I think we can uh, make this look a little better so under guides um, let's change this to polygon center we can change the length make it a little shorter like this and um, under here we can change the roots to as guides and let's generate some splines and the hair object has its own gravity force so I'm gonna turn that to zero so now let's play this back again and now this looks a lot more loose and uh, organic but it is moving quite a bit so to make this a little more subtle in the movements we can go back to simulate particles and add a friction force and uh, this allows us if I turn up the strength here to make everything a little more subtle okay that's pretty good another thing you can do is maybe I turn down the segments for my guys or splines and I think that looks pretty good so I'm gonna call it good and keep moving we can always circle back if we need to um, let's add some geometry to our hair objects so since they're behaving like splines we can just go use a sweep object and then add a circle let's drop the circle in and right now the circle is quite large so let's make that kind of small like five and let's drop the hair object into it and bam we have some um, tentacles to work with one thing though uh, let me change my intermediate point for my circle from adoptive to uniform and maybe make it say two because we don't need so many segments especially if we are going to be like farther out like this and under the sweep object under details we have um, the option to draw a curve for the scale so I'm just gonna do something kind of like this 
okay and uh, let's create the ends for these tentacles to do that I'm just gonna create a sphere which is you can see right here hold up my display mode yeah you can see it right here and let's drop that into a cloner object and let's scale our sphere down quite a bit in our cloner um, let's change the mode to object render instances and let's reference our hair object and right away you have um, a lot of spheres going on so let's turn our count to one and uh, let's move our offset here to 99 so it's right at the end and let's uh, let's play this back and see how this looks okay cool I think that looks pretty good um, let's keep moving on so next let's create a path um, for the jellyfish to travel because right now it's just stationary in one spot so to do that I'm gonna go to one of my side views and take my pen to and using a cubic spline oops I'm just gonna draw a simple path something like this okay and let's name this our jelly path and again I'm gonna change my intermediate point to uniform and maybe make it 64 something quite high now um, I'm gonna turn off my cloner object uh, this, let's rename this as our tentacle heads and this as the tentacle arms so for the sake of speed I'm just gonna turn this off for now but I'll leave the hair object on and uh, I'm also gonna turn off my jiggle deformer and for my jellyfish I'm gonna add a spline wrap deformer I want to put it after the bulge and let's reference our path like so and let's change our mode to keep length now let's make sure that it's pointing in the right direction in the positive Y and we're gonna keyframe the offset so that it moves along here but I want to keyframe the offset um, uh, in, in in time with the uh, the fall of cycle here so let's talk about this for a second for the animation speed we're working right now at 24 frames per second so what that means is when the speed is at hundred percent it's gonna cycle through this whole thing every 24 frames so at 50% it's gonna cycle through every 48 frames so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna keyframe our offset every 48 frames so frame 0 let's go up 0 let's go 48 let's just move it at 5% keyframe let's go to 96 let's go to 10% keyframe 144 15% keyframe 92 20% keyframe and 240 25% keyframe now let's just play this back real quick okay so that looks pretty good but right now it's kind of moving smooth I kind of want the the motion to be kind of slows down ramps up slows down ramps up kind of like when a uh, contracts so let's just bring up our curve editor for our keyframes for the offset let's highlight everything and uh, let's play with these these uh, tangents so first thing I want to do is break all the tangents and uh, in its attribute you can actually set a value for all of them at the same time which is pretty cool so let's make let's make it um, kind of slow in the beginning slow in the beginning and it ramps up and it slows down again something like that okay something like that let's uh, let's play this back and see how that looks 
and let's turn back our jiggle deformer back on okay I think that looks pretty good um, I'm gonna call it good let's keep moving uh, one thing though maybe I don't want to start right from the end here maybe I want to be more in the middle so very simple let's bring up our editor our curve editor again and with all my points selected let's just move it all the way up a little bit so now, so now it starts somewhere in the middle okay cool at this point what I'm gonna do is to cache my jiggle deformer so under cache just hit calculate this will just help me speed up my um, workflow and I'm also gonna cache my hair object um, under cache just hit calculate and um, this is very helpful because now I can scrub my timeline back and forth uh, since this is dynamic it was a uh, it will give you like issues if you don't do this so cool looks pretty good let's turn back on our sweep and our um, cloner object and let's pick a spot and let's create our camera so let's create a camera look through it and let's keyframe our position and rotation and let's go to the end and maybe pick uh, frame it up and then keyframe position rotation again bring up the uh, curve editor and let's make it linear so let's play this back okay I think that looks pretty good I'm gonna call it good and uh, let's keep moving so the next thing I want to do is to start working on the lighting and materials for my animation but let's break down the approach um, we want to take so the way I did this is using two render passes one for the base kind of a translucent material which I'm gonna use octane to render and another pass for these um, kind of a bioluminescent kind of a light lighting material and then we're gonna composite both of these passes later in After Effects to create our final look in addition to uh, some of the environment particles so let's do that um, when I'm using hot let's create the uh, the translucent material the base material first so to do that I'm gonna use octane and when I use octane I have a custom layout that I like to use let me load that real quick and uh, let's go through our um, render settings for our octane uh, direct lighting is usually very good but I uh, I prefer path tracing because it's a little more accurate it's a little, it takes a little longer but it's a little more accurate especially when you're doing doing anything with the uh, subsurface scattering which is what we're gonna be using so let me just put some uh, basic starting values here that kind of that I'm gonna use something like that okay and let's just run this in and this is what without doing anything this is what this looks like so let's add an environment here and we can use a HDR but I'm just gonna use a RGB spectrum because I just want a black environment and let's add a light in here and uh, let's make sure that our light is all the way above and pointing down to our um, jellyfish somewhere here and maybe we want to scale it up a little bit as well something like that and we can print this back and maybe I can duplicate this light and bring it behind it so we're here 
and let me turn off my first light just so I can see what my second light is doing so it's something like this maybe from below something like that and maybe I want to go this way kind of kind of want to create kind of a, a red light now you see it here in my view which is okay you can go under um, it's light settings and just turn down these opacity so now you can't see it anymore. Okay, so that creates a little rim light. Let's turn this back on. All right, cool. So that's kind of my basic lighting setup. We can go, the way I like to do it is, you know, I sort of set something up um, broad and then go back and uh, tweak it, the details. So for our materials, let me create a octane specular material and uh, we're gonna name this our jelly skin I guess and let's just apply it to um, everything and oh real quick let me add a octane camera tag to my camera and uh, when I'm using octane I like to turn on my camera imager and work in linear space there's all these like really cool uh, options here but like I prefer to do all my um, color correction and all that stuff in After Effects and post because just because I feel like I have a lot more control and uh, flexibility but feel free to play with this if you feel if like so okay so this is my camera um, octane camera tag let's go back to my material and uh, I also like to work um, with the octane note editor as well when I'm doing materials because especially if I'm doing like really complicated materials it's kind of nice to see like all the nodes and and the connections but this is just gonna be a very simple material so let's just scroll through some of the settings here roughness we can just turn that up a little bit a little roughness maybe turn down my um, turn down my reflection and a shroppy I don't need to touch this fake shadows make sure you check that on I think that just speeds up your renders I'm not exactly sure what this does but I always have it on um, nothing 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 transmission you want to make sure that this is all the way to a hundred Transmission is kind of cool because if you change the colors here, you can get some like cool colors here, but I'm just going to leave it white. Okay. And, uh, okay, cool. I'm going to lock my perspective, my resolution, so we can see exactly what this looks like. Let me save my work. Octane sometimes is a little sketchy because it just crashes on me like randomly. So always good to save your work. And medium. Okay, so here's where the uh, the magic happens in the medium. You want to create a scattering medium node, which you can see here in your material. And uh, I'm going to add a uh, RGB spectrum two of them duplicate and I'm going to pipe that into the absorption and scattering options and for my color for my RGB spectrum let's turn that all the way to 100% white and for the scattering and this is kind of like what the color you want your um, your jellyfish to be so I'm going to create some kind of a light bluish color and right now I'm not seeing too much because you want the, the magic here is all in the density. So if I turn this way down, it's starting to look a lot more translucent. Right? Cool. And uh, while I'm working, let me turn my resolution down to something a little smaller. Just so that it's a little faster. So at this point it's all about just kind of tweaking so I'm gonna turn um, I'm gonna go into my lights and uh, right now 
I'm gonna turn off my second light, the uh, the backlight. And maybe I should lame that, but we're good. And I'm gonna turn down my power and maybe change the color to a little more coolish or the temperature. Something like that. Um, see, if you turn up the density, it becomes a lot more um, translucent or opaque, I guess, which is all right. Um, something like that. So you see a balance kind of play back and forth. And let's turn back our backlight and turn that way down. Just want a little bit, kind of like. Something like that. Okay, cool, cool. I think that's pretty good. And uh, like I said, I like to do most of my color corrections in After Effects. So generally, what I when I'm working in 3D, I just want to get something looking fairly good enough so that I can just bring it into After Effects and uh, do my thing. But anyways, I think this is all right for now. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a a uh, an emission material illumination it's called this illumination and this is just a default octane uh, diffuse material and under emission you can add a black body emission surface brightness so if you just add this to my jellyfish body right now it's just like a self illuminated material and what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna create a mixed material and I'm gonna add my jellyfish skin to material 2, my illumination material to material 1, and change this to octane falloff map. So now if I apply this to my jellyfish, it's mixing between the uh, illumination material and the, and the skin. And uh, the falloff here is where you kind of control things a little bit, like so can crush this a little bit but I'm gonna go into my illumination material into the black body and just turn down this power way down I just want a small subtle kind of a rim fall off map thing going on and maybe I change my colors or the temperature to a more bluish hue yeah okay so that looks pretty good to me I think I'm happy with that um save my work real quick and at this point if you have octane 4 and above uh, you have the option of the uh, the denoiser which is kind of new and this is awesome because uh, like you like so this is just without the denoiser and this is with the denoiser and it looks so much more smoother and uh, again I'm using really low samples in the past, you would have to like crank this way up to like a thousand or something, and it would take forever to give you a nice result. But this is awesome. So I think we can we're be, we're able to get away with just a hundred um, sample rates or sample size. And um, if we render this at 1080, let's refresh that. Let's see how fast that would take takes about seven seconds yeah seven seconds which is pretty fast which is pretty fast but I think I'm just gonna for even faster let's just go back to 720 and this takes about three seconds to render so I'm at this point I'm gonna render uh, the sequence this 10 second jellyfish sequence so let's go to our output and uh, say all frames and make sure we're rendering in octane you know octane settings you want to make sure that you check use the denoise path pass as the main pass and let's create a uh, place for this to save this okay and 
think we got everything and I'm just gonna hit render to a uh, picture viewer and let this run hopefully it's not gonna take too long and I'm gonna pause this while this renders and uh, I will see you when this is done okay we're back and we're done rendering so let's take a look at our render uh, it's pretty good there's a little flickering but it's all right and it took about let's see 25 minutes to render this whole sequence which is pretty good okay so moving on let's uh, let's create the other pass to do that I'm gonna create a texture in After Effects words so let me create a new comp a thousand by a thousand 24 frames 240 frames long okay let's create a salad and I'm gonna add a radio wave so this is what it looks like by default let me change my color to white and let me increase the uh, starting width and let me turn down my lifespan maybe turn down the expansion and frequency something like that maybe I can change my width even more I think that looks pretty good okay next I'm gonna add a fast box blur which is the new fast blur um, turn that up and let me add a turbulent displace and I'm gonna turn down the size here maybe crank up the uh, complexity can play with the amount something like that and I'm gonna keyframe the evolution by hitting alt and say time times a hundred oops cool let me duplicate this one more time crank up the complexity even more and let's play with our size a little more kind of just something like that let's add a vector blur to this and crank this all the way up something high like a hundred something like that cool um let me go back to my fast blur and maybe like turn that down so that it's a little more sharp and let's go play with these values a little bit more okay okay I think that looks pretty good um, I'm gonna add a glow as well and let's crank up our radius maybe turn tone it down so let's just do a quick RAM preview and see what it looks like okay cool cool and you know I can go back and maybe I, I don't I can make my width my beginning width a little smaller turn down my radius play with the amount here okay I think that looks pretty good maybe turn this back up a little bit yeah okay so I'm gonna render out this sequence um, probably just as a JPEG JPEG sequence let me save this as my texture what do we call this illumination texture nation texture and should be fairly quick and let's go back to cinema so for this pass I'm just gonna go use my standard 
uh, octane render well not octane but a uh, standard render so let's go back to my startup layout because I'm not going to be using octane anymore and let's see I can use octane for this but it's just faster which is the standard render so let's create our material let's call this our texture let's uh, apply it to my jellyfish and I'm also going to create a matte material or just a black material for the arms and the head so I'm going to turn off reflectance and for now I am going to turn off my deformers and uh, let's go back to turn I'm going to come out of my camera and um, this is going to be my texture material so I'm going to turn off color reflectance and activate luminance and let's go find that texture and let's go in here animation calculate cool and let's check on animated preview so if we scrub this through something's happening but Right now, the uh, the UVs are a little off, so I'm gonna go to my projections and hit flat, and I'm gonna go into my texture mode. I'm gonna hit fit to object, and I'm gonna rotate this by 90 degrees, something like that, and hit fit to object again. Okay, I'm gonna hit shift V and uh, click select wireframe so that when I select it doesn't um, it doesn't um, I can still see it otherwise I can't really see anything so if I scale this up and just play this through I think that looks pretty good scrub this through yeah I think that looks pretty good so what I'm going to do is right click and create generate UVW coordinates. Yes, and we can delete the old one. So now if I turn back my deformers and look through my camera again, we should have our animation going. And I can turn off my lights and also the sky object. So let's render this out and we're just we're just going to use our standard render all frames save and let's save this as jelly tutorial texture and let's render to picture viewer so it should be fairly quick in the meantime let's go back to after effects and let's um, import our uh, render that we just did let's drop this into a new comp very cool and um, let me just bring up my animation one more time so let's take a look at this um, there's some particles in the environment in the background here you can do that in cinema but I'm just gonna use trapco particular for this good old trap hook particular so let's create a new uh, salad let's call this particles and let's apply trap call particular cool so in the newer versions of particular they have the whole like designer this whole thing here which is cool and uh, definitely they have some awesome presets and uh, it's kind of fun to play with but I like to do things old school so I'm just gonna go through my settings in my emitter let's take um, let's say box let me turn my velocity all the way down zero zero let's go individual let me just go zero 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 let's bring up X here and let's move this down below something here and let's give it 
let's make sure that it's going into a direction but I don't want any spread and if I turn up my velocity and let's rotate this 90 degrees up something like that let's create some more randomness to my velocity let's bring this down and then maybe I can increase the Y as well let's go into our particle settings live random 50% maybe even more um, size variation let's give it 60% variation and maybe make it a little smaller say three per size over life I am just gonna use a preset it's gonna get smaller or maybe something like that no actually I'm just gonna use this one opacity variations crank that up opacity over life I'm gonna use another preset maybe something like this okay cool Maybe I want to turn up my life to maybe four seconds. Okay. Um, let's see. Color, let's give it a random from gradient. So let's just pick one of the presets here and, uh, and let's change some of the colors. Maybe not so blue, maybe just a little light blue and maybe a little greenish something like that okay cool you know what maybe I may make it size 4 a little bigger and oh under emission extra so let's crank that to 100 so that we have all the particles in the beginning already uh, now let's go into physics real quick I am going to add um, a little wind so that it's moving in the, a little to the right and maybe I'm gonna crank up my turbulence just a little bit of turbulence and crank this down to maybe like eight so let's just play this back and see how he feels it's pretty good it's moving a little fast but no no big deal uh, if I turn down the physics time factor say like 0.5 uh, now it's moving way slow which is fine let's go make it like 0.8 or something and we can add more particles say 200 let's play this back yeah I think that looks pretty good I'm gonna save our file jellyfish tutorial 2 and our render has finished rendering Let's play this back. Cool. That looks pretty awesome. All right, so let's bring that into After Effects. Let's bring that in. This is our layer. And uh, right now, our beauty layer, if we isolate that, there's no alpha. But I believe our texture layer, if I solo it, it has alpha. So. I want to put the particles behind my beauty layer so that it's, I mean, I can just leave it like this, but let's just put it behind. To do that though, I want to, I want to extract the alpha from my texture layer. And you can do that by using the set matte option. And we can select the texture and here it is. Now you have some um, alpha on your beauty layer. Okay. And for my okay real quick though let's let me add a solid i'm gonna go to my mask double click and this is gonna be my vignette so let me just turn this like this hit feather feather that out and bring it down to something like 20 percent it's a little feathering and for my main beauty pass I am um, going to add some color correction so let me add curves and let me just add a real quick contrast curve and maybe I go into my blue turn that up a little bit 
um, maybe red, turn that down a little bit. Maybe green, like do a little S curve. Something like that. I just like play it by eye. I think that looks pretty good. And uh, for my texture layer, let me change my blending mode to add. And look at that. How cool is that, huh? And if you want to change the color like I did for my example here, you can just add a tint to it and uh, change that to, I don't know, say orange, golden orange color. That looks pretty cool. But let's do something different. Let's just keep it more, let's do a more of a bluish color. Yeah. And I'm going to add a overall color correction adjustment layer. And uh, add another curves. Something like that. And maybe, oops, I'm going to add a glow to this whole thing. Oh, I want to make sure I work in 16-bit, maybe even 32-bit. That would just give you more um, color and variation. So there's my glow, add a little subtle glow, turn down the intensity. Can I just play with this a little bit? Okay. Cool. And... The other thing I did was um, I added a little depth of field or a little blur to the, just the edges here. And to do that, let's I'm going to create a solid. Say OK. Double click on my mask. Feather this out. Maybe uh, rotate it a little bit. And I'm going to pre-compose this. I'm going to call this my blur map. I'm going to go in here and create another black solid black solid put it behind it let's go back to our main this is our main jelly let's hide this and let's create adjustment layer I'm gonna call this my depth of field because I'm gonna apply a third-party plugin called depth of field effect or depth of field from fresh loot which I use all the time let's select our map let's pick a point and crank up the radius now we have some little bokeh action going out here um i may even want to add a glow to my particular layer let's see how that looks crank that down and uh, maybe i'll leave it just keep it subtle Let's see if I want to add a glow to this. Ooh. Looks pretty cool. I mean, for me, it's when I'm in After Effects, this is where I have the most fun. It's just, I can just like kind of play around, experiment with different things. Yeah, maybe I'll leave that on. Let me, uh, let's do a RAM preview and see how everything's looking. And maybe we, can, we don't have to start uh, right here because it's kind of looking kind of weird. So maybe we'll start somewhere here. And uh, let's run preview. I'm going to pause while it run previews. Okay, it's done run previewing. And let's take a look. Cool, man. I think that looks pretty cool. Um, yep, so that's pretty much the, the tutorial. I mean, of course, you know, the my animation that we did, you know, I, I spent a lot more time finessing um, all these settings, but that's the basic idea, and uh, I think that looks pretty good. So, this is it for me. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.